Hello, welcome, welcome. So in this series, we've been building a CPU from scratch. And in this episode, I kind of like to go on a bit of a tangent here. Currently, we have this display down below. And if we run the computer and we advance through the program, we have a light that kind of indicates which instruction we're currently on. And we have a bit of a display made out of these um, output pins and it works but I was wondering if there would be something better because uh, for every instruction we'll need one of these lines and that just isn't going to scale. Uh, in fact I don't think it'll scale past three instructions which is all this can really handle right now. So I was looking into some options and this is the prototype that I built. Uh, I'll just bring it on screen here. So what you can see is if we start, you can see that it, it gives us the word add uh, and it'll probably be more like this size or so. And I can change it to uh, instruction six, which is the move instruction. And I have instruction seven as the jump instruction. And then of course, um, instruction zero is the add. So this gives us the name of the instruction that's currently being executed. And I think in this episode, I will rebuild this so that you can see how it was built. So let's get right to it. We kind of need more room Let's just put it uh, down below, I guess. So I built it out of these 16 segment displays and I used six of them. So the maximum length of an instruction, the name of an instruction will be six letters, which I think is fine. Let me see if I can move this down. There we go, there. And this is way too big. I think I set it to size zero. And I changed the color from red because, well, Okay, so there's the six displays. Uh, these displays take uh, two inputs, the LED, which is a 16-bit bus for each of the segments of the LED, and there's 16 segments. And the other input is a decimal point, which will always be zero, basically. Um, so we need a new embedded circuit. And I'm going to save this as uh, Finster Display. Uh, and then the settings in here, um, I set it to white so that it's not so eye catching. I think that might work. Uh, the width, I believe, was 12. Um, I just set the label to like something small. So I'm just going to put a dot in there and uh, layout is important. Uh, height, I think it won't let me get by with anything less than two for the height, but let's try one just in case it works. Um, and I believe that's everything. So then we need a bunch of outputs. And it's important that the outputs are pointed upwards, so the dot is on the bottom. That will place the output on the top of the uh, embedded circuit in the other window. So this is going to be the 16-bit output and I'm just going to call this um, uh, D1 for lack of creativity on my naming and let's call this uh, P1 for the uh, decimal point. So P for point really doesn't matter what the names of these are and we need six of these. All right, so let's just make sure that this is working. Uh, these need to be 16 bits from a value of zero. Okay. Now let's insert this component that we just made. There we go, perfect, it lines up. 
Uh, sometimes it'll draw the lines for me. I haven't figured out exactly what will do that reliably. All right, seems like it's working. So now the issue is how do we display interesting things? Let me just grab one of these and I'll, I'll show you what I came up with. Okay, so we have one of these displays. Let's, um, let's play with it a little bit. Uh, we need 16 bits on the input. So if we run this, um, you'll notice that depending on what bits are set, of the 16 bits, it'll light up different, um, different segments. So um, the first segment is here, then the second segment is here, the third segment is here, um, the next segment is here, fifth, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it does um, this segment, this, 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 then it does, uh, this segment, this segment, then um, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. So it's kind of a weird order, and it's actually a, not a super standard order, but I mapped it out. Um, and then what is helpful is, uh, let me just zoom things here. Um, memory, ROM. 16 data bits and seven address bits. So this is the segments mapped into numbers and letters as well. So this is actually the ASCII codes. Don't ask me what ASCII stands for, but it is the standard way of representing text in binary. I'm sure if you want to Google ASCII, uh, it's spelled like this, and it'll explain to you what that actually means. But if we do this, and we do, um, I probably shouldn't have deleted that, um, seven bits, and then we need a selector. There we go. Move this over and wire it up. All right, so you'll notice that it's displaying a zero, and I can open this up and one, two, three, four. So it'll display um, the hexadecimal digits up to F, and then it's blank until you get to um, the letters. So you can use an ASCII code for zero, and that will display a zero as well. So there's two mappings for zero. Um, same with one and all the way up to nine and then it also has a b etc it doesn't have the lowercase letters because um, i don't plan to use them and well i mean i could have entered in the uppercase letters in the slots for the lowercase letters but i didn't so i'll just explain how i created this rom i actually have a spreadsheet here and you can see on the spreadsheet up at the top, I have kind of a hash pattern. Um, these are the segments on the top. These are the segments on the side. This is the middle vertical segment. There's two of those, middle horizontal segments, and then the diagonal seg segments here. And I could enter in a one in all of the spots that I wanted to have a segment light up and then it'll put that into binary for me and display the hexadecimal result. So what I did was I would take this, copy it, paste it into a column here, um, and this is a zero, so I can replace the zero, I think. Uh, not quite, it's an O. Yeah, I can replace the O. So I just pasted, went here, paste values only, that will remove the formula and it'll just paste the results of the formula into the into the grid and then it gives me the code that i need in order to 
reproduce that digit. And I just went online and found a bunch of patterns. I can't show you the patterns because they're copyrighted, <laughs> which is frustrating. Uh, I can show you what they look like in the program. I just can't show you the original image. So yeah, I just went through manually, entered them in, in this pattern here, and I can clear it out between digits really easily, um, figured out what all of the patterns are, uh, figured out all of the hexadecimal digits, and then went into the ROM in here and just entered in the hexadecimal values at all of the different uh, addresses for each of the ASCII codes. So that's how I built that. I will not rebuild it in video because that was a very long process. It took me a few hours uh, and I don't even think you want to watch that sped up. So I have a magic file that I just loaded <laughs> to save you from having to watch me do that. So now, given that, we do have these uh, ROMs that we can use to display each digit. So let's carry on with that. And I'm just going to move this out of the way here. All right. Let's make a copy of that for each one. Uh, I need to move these over. Uh, Put five in between each one here. All right, we have a ROM for each digit. Now we just need to drive each digit with uh, a value of some sort. So So this probably won't work long term, but what I did is I just set up a multiplexer that we can use for uh, figuring out the ASCII values for each position. So I'm just going to pre-populate everything with a space so that it has a blank. And I set the number format to ASCII so that it will allow us to enter in an ASCII uh, letter. Uh, you put it in single quotes in order to enter in the letter. All right, so we have a space. All right, now. There we go. So we have a multiplexer that will allow us to change the text that's displayed for each digit. We have an input that'll select one of eight different texts that we could display, I guess. So currently we have room for eight different instructions. Uh, obviously this is not going to scale if we have a hundred different instructions. We'll have to figure out something different for that. But for now this will work. So the first instruction is the add instruction, so we can change that. Um, and then the sixth instruction is the move instruction, so we can add that. And then the last instruction is the jump instruction. Awesome. Somehow I got that all mixed up. I'm not sure where my mind was at. Uh, this would be M. Okay, that looks better. All right, so let's try this out. Um, seems to produce results. Uh, it'll be easier to see in the other window though. So let's give this an input. There we go. And. If we go to seven, we've got a jump. Six, we've got move. So there you go. And we've got some blank space for more instructions. So let's try and wire this up. 
So I don't want to destroy the current display that we have because I'm not exactly sure how to replace this part of it. I'm still thinking about that part, but at least we can replace the, the label here. And for now, I'm just going to make it supplementary. I'm just going to put it here. Now I'm tying it off of the instruction line here, which um, I'd rather have like an op line. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's do that. There we go. Here we go. We have it displaying. That's pretty neat. So I think this is a pretty good place to end it. I'm going to do some more thinking about how we can replace the rest of this, but this is a really good start. Now, the reason why I want to have a single display for uh, the instruction is that this will eventually be a pipeline processor, and that means that there'll be multiple instructions in flight at the same time. And by in flight, I mean uh, at currently being executed. So in, the, in a pipeline processor, the fetch unit will be doing one thing, the decode unit will be doing a different thing, uh, the execute unit will be doing a third thing, the write back unit will be doing a, a, yet another thing. Um, and I want to display exactly what's happening in each stage of the pipeline as a separate row. And so having each instruction as a separate row just doesn't work. I want to have a single row that displays at each of the instructions in an informative manner. So that is what I'm building towards. So that will make it a lot easier once we get to the stage where we have multiple instructions in flight at once. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great day and I hope this has been interesting. Bye.